Paula from the Flavish Chicken Emporium and today we've got this lovely washstand that looks a bit worse for wear, a bit rustic and we're going to have a go at something I haven't had a go at before called faux verdigris. Um, I've had to play around and mix some paints together which is something that I haven't done too much of either. Um, so the plan is, this is the, uh, the backdrop and we've taken it out, we've had to do some filling and as you can see all of this has been filled and rubbed back but before I put this back in I'm going to do some stenciling on it and it will be much easier to stencil as a flat piece I'm then going to use the same stencil to um, do some raised areas around it randomly um, I got this stencil from eBay uh, if anyone wants one we've then been mixing up some paints over here ready so what I've resulted in is a mixture of Paul Boy and Anguilla to give me this lovely kind of blue turquoisey colour. Um, and then I've got Cool Copper Frenchine mixed up with Finishing Coat and the Green Goddess mixed up with Finishing Coat. And then here is just normal straight Finishing Coat. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the Cool Copper and my stippling brush to put some areas on it that I want to be looking rusty and then we're going to seal it off with finishing coat so we're going to do that and we're going to get the stenciling done and then we'll come back and show you what we've been doing all right thanks right so as you can see close up we've done some raised stenciling and we've used sort of parts of the stencil in different places so this bit here is upside down so it doesn't look the same doesn't look so uniformed we've done a bit down the bottom we have done a little bit on the side here but we've also done that bit there which is going to go there so that will look great once it's painted over done two coats of um, copper frenching in all the random places that you can see decided not to finishing coat over the top because I think because we've mixed it with finishing coat it should be fine and fairly sort of sealed as it is so the next job is to paint uh, with my concoction here which is about 75% Anguilla, 25% Pool Boy, um, if you wanted to make up the mixture yourself. So that's what we're going to do now, is paint everywhere in that. And then we'll come back and see what that looks like. Well, as you can see, we've um, given it two coats. It's not absolutely perfect. There are some areas where you can see through a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that too much because I know there's going to be lots of other layers of colours going on top of it. Um, it's good enough. It's looking quite blue at the moment, um, and the plan was I'm not probably a little bit more turquoisey, um, but we're still heading in that direction. Um, we're going to use some um, green goddess Frenchine to bring out some green, and we've obviously got the copper underneath that the next job is to start sanding through and showing that copper through. The ray stencils are looking great. So I just talked through. Um, what I've done and why, I've painted just slightly inside the edges round there, I tried to not let any lumps and bumps build up in the corners because it makes the drawer difficult to go back in um, but that's because when you push the drawer in sometimes the drawer pushes in a little bit further than you want and then you can see the woods and that's really annoying so we've done that and as far as the door front goes we've all we've done is paint the top and a little bit along the sides. You don't want to paint here because again it will make it really difficult to get the drawer in and out. So even though it would probably look prettier, it will actually cause you more problems, you'll end up sanding it off. So that's where we're at. So now we're going to use some sandpaper. Now I've got some rough paper which is 120 grit which is quite coarse. So I'm going to try with that first and see where we get on. So I know that there was copper here. So I'm just going to rub away some of the paint to start naturally revealing the copper so it looks like rust. I think you can see it's showing. So what I need to do is go, up, go over the whole piece where I know that there was copper underneath and start revealing it all and then we'll show you what it looks like because at that point we'll be starting to add the green but already that's looking pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. We'll be back in a bit. Okay, so as you can see, the um, the copper's coming through from the sanding. Really love it. I, I just think it's it's special. It looks so much better for it being underneath rather than on the top. 
I've sanded back over the stencils and um, so you can see where the stencils are and I think yellow grey they get once they've sort of painted and once we've done our bit with them they're, they're going to look really lovely there as well just turn an ordinary piece into something special so what I'm going to do now is add some more of our shiny metallicness so I've mixed up already green goddess with finishing coat and I'm now going to mix up a little bit more of the copper so I'll show you how I do it so it's about that much which I would say was just under a teaspoon it's not an exact art so I'm just literally measuring not measuring even uh, finishing coat in and then just mixing it up you can see it's a gorgeous gorgeous copper colour now this morning when we were playing around with colours and trying to get the colours that we wanted we tried mixing this um, in with the paint, see if the, well, mix the green one in with the paint, see if it gave it a tint, but it didn't really show up. So we're going to use it neat with the finishing coat, we decided that would be better. So I've got a very tiny brush this time, I know I usually use a fat stencil brush and I might go back to that in a while, but first of all, while I'm just practicing, I want to just use the tiniest brush just to dab and start building up the patina and the colours. So I'm going to be using both brushes, uh, the green and the copper, to build up in layers all over it and already that green just looks lovely on that colour. It looks really nice. So I'm going to be adding that to the whole piece in various areas in exactly the way I've just shown you. And natural patina actually runs drips with the rain so it's perfectly okay to let a drip dribble and run as it would. Okay so we'll come back when we've done a bit more on that and show you a close up when we're done. Right so we've done lots of stippling, we actually moved on to my um, fatter stippling brush because it was much quicker uh, in the end and I think it's still got the good, the, the good effect. I don't know if that's where we're going to finish in terms of the green and the copper but it's where we're going to finish so far. The next thing we're going to do is cover the whole thing in finishing coat which will protect what we've got um, and then we're going to play around with some glazes and waxes that will hopefully bring it all together and then we'll be able to decide if it needs more copper and more gold. Um, just a lovely little touch, these were ceramic knobs that were on there, a bit ghastly looking to be honest but been painted up to match and I think they just look perfect. Couldn't have bought them to look any better really. So as you can see just from rubbing back the stencils you can see really well as well. So finishing coat it is. So I've put the finishing coat on to completely seal and secure it and we've dried it with a hairdryer. I've mixed up some black scumble which is a loof paint mixed up with the scumble which will create a, a glaze for me to use a sponge and swish, swish on over the whole of the project, it's going to bring up the stencil lovely and I'm hoping it's going to tie in all of the colours that we've used so far. Uh, we'll have to wait to see how it's finished as to whether or not we decide to add different colour glazes on the top. But this is what we're going to do first and we'll come back and see what that looks like. Hiya, so we've slept on it and sometimes you need to do that, come away and, and think and then come back and see it with fresh eyes um, because we wanted to sort of work out where we wanted to go with it next and I think actually coming in this morning we could have just left it as it is because it actually really pleased with it and it looks really nice but I want to step it up just a little bit more. So, new ideas today. We've mixed a bit of white wax with Anguilla, so as you can see it's made quite a light green colour and we're going to use that to highlight some areas um, and then I've got some defining wax and we're going to use that to add some dark and shade to it and then finally we're going to use the Cool Copper Frenchine and we're actually going to pick out and hand paint over the top of these um, lovely stencil, ray stencils that we've created because I think that will give it a real wow factor. So when we've done all of that we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Right, it is now finished. As you can see, the stencil 
is the bit that sold it for me. Absolutely love the raised stencil with the copper just picking it out. Some of the areas here has been a bit resistive because of the wax that had gone over the top, but actually I really quite like that. That's worked. We spent a little bit more time with some more stippling to get the more rusty kind of look. We've used the white wax and the defining wax to pick out and give it more texture and more relief. Really, really pleased with the finished result. Really love it. It's very, very pretty to look at. I hope you've learned something here today and that you'd like to have a go at it yourself. That would be great and I'd love to see your pictures. Thank you so much for your support. And um, please follow and like my page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash The Emporium Furniture, which will take you straight to Fairly Chic Emporium. Thank you. Until the next time.